Hey everybody, welcome. Uh, in this screencast, I'm gonna. My name is Tim Rzinski, and in this screencast, I'm gonna show you how you could take GeoGebra resources on your profile page and organize them effectively. Okay, because a lot of times, far too often, I've done this in work in school districts with I've worked with teachers. People find GeoGebra re teachers find GeoGebra resources that they really like. Okay, but then they add the favorites and they add another one, the favorites and another, another. And then like after 10 minutes, it's like, wait, where did that one go again? So I'm going to introduce, the, I'm going to show you how to create what we call a GeoGebra book to help you effectively organize the resources that you find and love just the way you want them. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen and we're going to go ahead and uh, get started here. So if you want to, you know, tag along with me, you can like, keep me in one window and uh, go to GeoGebra on the other. You can. All right, but uh, I'm going to work in this window right here. So I'm logged into GeoGebra.org as myself. Okay, actually, hang on. I have to um, log out again here. Wrong account. One second. I should have checked this before. All right, test student 111. There we go. Sign in. All right, apologize for that. So now my profile page right here is as such okay in a former in a, in a previous screencast we actually took a look at how to uh create our own a mod of copy a resource edit it and call it our own but in this case right uh i'm going to show you what teachers often do and show you how it becomes a problem and then we're going to show how to to fix that so i'm going to just say for example find um i don't know linear equation or something like that just to find a resource here, like, and here's a uh, very popular resource from uh, from Steve Phelps, right? Graph the line, and so uh, once uh, the student graphs the line, for example, right here, okay, slope of three, and uh, you did it. And so I like this resource. Say I'm an algebra one teacher, and I like it. Okay, so often what teachers will do is they'll go up here to this, these dots, and they'll add the favorites. Okay, like uh, like show. So add the favorites. And it's add the favorites. And then I go back to GeoGebra. Then I search, say, uh, Pythagorean theorem. All right. You can find some other stuff. And this is like one of my favorite books of all time out there. Uh, Steve, uh, Steve Helps has over like 30 proofs without words of the Pythagorean theorem here. And so I look, I look at this one. I play with it. I decide that I like it. And hey, I'm going to add this one to my favorites now. And the list goes on and on and on. I would make every one of these beautiful proofs a favorite. Okay. But when you have too many favorites you're, under your profile page here, it really, really gets hard to, to find your resources here. So what we're going to do here, when you go to GeoGebra, you want to go to your profile. Okay. Uh, in the profile here, we want to go to right here where it says new book. Okay. Think of a book as like a file cabinet. Okay that you are moving into, you're hiring movers to come into your GeoGebra office that, well, looks empty except for one resource here, right? We want to fill this up, okay? And so we're going to click on new book here, and you're going to give it chapters, you're going to title it what you want, you can do anything you please here, all right? So let's suppose I'm an Algebra 1 teacher. So when I was teaching a full time, what I often did every year that I taught is I would create a GeoGebra book I did one per prep that I taught. Some teachers like to do one per course. That's up to you, okay? So I'm gonna title this book Algebra One Resources, okay? Or Algebra One Sampler, just something like that. Algebra One uh, Activities, something like that, okay? And I can give it a description if I choose to make it public. You don't have to, all right? I could leave all this blank. But again, just like we talked about with resources before, when it comes to visibility, if you want your students to access all these resources within your book, you need to make them at least share with link. Okay, share with link means you're not findable by the general public. But if you make it public, anybody could find it if they look hard enough. Share with link is analogous to an unlisted YouTube video. Okay, so most teachers prefer this option, so I'll keep it and I'll hit uh, save. And so now I am in book edit mode now. This says book created successfully. So the title page is here. I can give it a thumbnail image if I want later, but again, don't need to now. But where it says content over here, I'm gonna choose to add a chapter. So in a lot of Algebra One courses and a lot of schools with whom teachers with whom I work, uh, let's put let's click new chapter and we'll call it say I don't know working with integers 
right? That tends to be a popular like review topic, right? So I'll hit save. And then let's say the next chapter, new chapter, let's say um, working with expressions. And we'll save that. You can create as many chapters as you want. I'll just throw one more in here. Okay, two more actually. Just say working, say linear equations, right? Solving linear equations, whatever. Um, this guy, and by the way, you can actually rearrange these chapters like so pretty nicely. Okay, it's, uh, it's very user friendly, very user friendly. So, and expressions for equations, but now, so one way to actually, uh, we can find other people's resources and if we want, insert them in these individual chapters. But let's actually, so we don't, but you know, that takes quite a bit of time. Let's actually, uh, let's actually try to work smart, not hard here. Instead, I wanna find other books. I wanna find books of other people so that I can just dump entire chapters in this, in this new book of mine. And then I, can just, uh, then I can just delete the stuff that I don't want and keep the stuff I wanna keep. So I'm gonna go to add chapter this time, but instead of clicking new chapter, I'm gonna go highlight existing chapter. Okay, and I, uh, I'm going to type in, I'm logged in as test student 111 up here. It's like a new, uh, like dummy account, but I'm going to type in algebra one and just see what pops up. Okay, um, algebra one, a lot of different things. Uh, there's a specific one I'm looking for here, and normally it pops up here. Uh, give me a second. Um, you could scroll through this. If you click on anything, you can, you can see it. Um, if you, if you know exactly what you're looking for, actually, if, if in another window, you type, you copy the URL and put it here, it'll, it'll, it'll come up right away. Uh, I have, I actually have a book called Algebra and Resources that from which I want to copy here. Let's see if it shows, let's see if it uh, shows up here. Um, give me, oh, there it is. So, you know, you'll see, you'll see work from users all over the place. Okay. But I'm logged in as test student 111. I created my brand new GeoGebra account, say, right? And um, I'm going to take a look at, say, for example, Tim Brzezinski's Algebra One Resources. I can tell it has 95 items in it. So if I click View, if I click View Content, all I'll be GeoGebra is going to generate for me now chapters that are contained within that book. Now, um, now I haven't seen these chapters hypothetically yet. I mean, yes, I am Tim. I know I created it, but I'm playing the role of the new teacher, new to GeoGebra, who wants to take a lot of steel, a lot of stuff, and put it in their own book at once. All right. So what I'm going to choose to do is copy all the items. I, I don't want to, I don't have time to look at all these chapters now because I got to teach in like a few minutes. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose to take all of the chapters in Tim Brzezinski's Algebra 1 book, right? Hypothetically. And I can import them into my new book that I'm creating right now. All right. I just, and, and by doing that, and I can uncheck stuff, I could check stuff, whatever. But I would say check everything in any book you find and you can look at it later. Import right and look what happens this book this brand new book that i just created called algebra one activities right i created these new these chapters they're empty because i typed them in myself but everything from four on down i imported from tim brzezinski's book entitled algebra one resources and so what i can do right now is literally look through everything right here preliminary topics plotting points blah 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 right and I can actually choose, if I click on it, I can actually inspect each item individually and say, okay, do I like this resource? Could this be a meaningful remediation tool for my students? Maybe, maybe not. You as a teacher have to make that call, okay? But if you like it, okay, all it did, all it did was it opened this resource in a new window. If you like it, keep it. So I'm going to go back to this, this, uh, this edit book tab here. I might keep it. Below in the battleship in the coordinate playing game here, but let's suppose I looked at one thing and I say, yeah, I don't, I look at this, I don't like it. So I can actually choose to remove Tim Brzezinski's rant, rant, rant. It's about the quadrants pretty much. I can uh, quad for rant, whatever. But um, I can remove it like so by removing it. Now, by deleting that, some teachers get concerned. Oh, am I going to delete Tim's file? No, 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 no. I'm logged in as test student 111, all right? Because I'm not logged in as Tim Brzezinski. I cannot delete Tim Brzezinski's file because I'm not him, say, right? So anytime you delete a resource from within your book, you're not deleting the actual resource itself, but what you're doing is deleting the existence of that resource in your personal file cabinet here we're making called our Algebra 1 Activities GeoGebra book. And so 
lo and behold, I could take, I can look at all the chapters that I imported from any other source anywhere in GeoGebra, and I can, when I go to book edit mode, I could weed out the stuff I don't want and keep the stuff that I do want. That's how uh, that's how I do it. Now, in any chapter, see how I'm solving systems graphically, I can add an activity to this chapter if I want. I just have to search. Now, you in another tab, if you have the URL open for the individual resource, paste the URL right in here, it'll pop up instantly, okay? But I might find, let's suppose, hypothetically, I wanted to take this, you know, Maybe I want to take, I'm going to take Steve Phelps's graph the line. Remember what I showed you before? I'm going to, that we looked at already. I'm going to add it to this book in this chapter. But then I, but then I'm thinking to myself, wait a minute. Um, which chapter did I, I, I accidentally added that resource into the systems chapter, but it doesn't, it shouldn't go there. It should go in graphing linear equations, right? So where'd it go? See how Steve Phelps's graph the line is right here. So that's no problem. I can just take that and I can put it in any chapter that I want. It's so easy. So I'll put it in, where would it be? I don't know. If I kept these titles, I could change them, you know, whatever, but say uh, graphing linear equations, because that's what it is, right? And I could put it anywhere in the chapter that I want. Organize it, put it there. You do whatever you want here. So I often, and now if I go back to my user ID right here, that's my profile page. And as a viewer now, right? I can look, I can click on this book and look at it, right? Now, the chapters that we typed are empty, so they don't show up. Remember, we did working with integers, doing stuff, but whenever you fill that chapter, it'll show up. But right now, these are all this, this is all the stuff you imported from that Tim Brzezinski Algebra 1 book, say. But right now, um, that's how you, you would do that. You're looking at it. If you want to go back to edit it, go right here. Go to edit book, and guess what? you're right back to where you started. Now you can move stuff around, you can do anything you want, okay? Now, that's probably the smart way of adding resources. Like I like to take stuff from other people's books and then I just kind of delete stuff that I don't want. But let's suppose, just really quickly, I'm almost done here, I find a single resource and I wanna add a resource, just say once, it's like, ooh, I really like it just the way it is, I wanna take it and use it and put it in this book of mine. Well, what I can do is uh, find it, let me just say, um, I'm going to find a specific one. Not that it's an Algebra 1 topic, but um, let's see. Uh, I want to find a resource, say, from Anthony Orr, who is an amazing GeoGebra author as well, in addition to Steve Phelps. But let's suppose I want to take his sections of cylinders resource, right? So for some reason, I want to throw this in my Algebra 1 book. I don't know, but it's, it's pretty awesome. I mean, look at this. If you take it, you can see, you know, um, see different sections here. And it's just it's just beautiful the way it is. I, I love this. I love the materials that he creates. So I might want to. So I can go now here. If I now here's how to add a here's how to add a single item. Okay. Um, there's two ways. The first way is I could just copy this URL, go back to edit book, and then just basically paste that URL when I go to add activity. A quicker way when you're looking at stuff one at resources one at a time is to just go here and go to details. Now, details, it gives you the number of views. Look at that. It's 357,000 views. It's popular. His, he's got popular stuff. So, but now here, check it out. I can click add to book. And now, I'm now I, since I'm a new user to GeoGebra, say I only have one book. But guess what? I can create a brand new one if I want to right now. Or I could throw it in my Algebra 1 book, say, and I could put it in, let's just hypothetically put it in the integers chapter. I mean, just for sake of illustration, right? Hit done. And guess what? See, I don't have to make that resource a favorite because if I go, I'm going to have a whole humongous list of favorites and I won't be able to find anything. But now I put stuff in books. I put them in chapters of books that I know where I'll find them as a teacher. And that'll make my life a lot less stressful. So if we go back here to my profile, right, click on Algebra 1 Activities, that brand new book that I just made. And you see how that chapter appears? Working with integers, sections of cylinders, Anthony Orr's beautiful cylinder. Uh, resources now in my brand new Algebra 1 book, okay? The possibilities here are absolutely, absolutely endless. So, um, but that's what I found uh, an effective way to pretty much, um, where am I? There I am, to actually create, uh, to actually organize GeoGebra resources effectively, in my opinion, is to use, is just to simply create a book. Again, a book is merely a file cabinet that you just throw in your GeoGebra office 
and the chapters that you add are the drawers of that file cabinet. And the single resources that you put within any chapter, those are the manila folders that are within your file cabinet right there. Okay, so teachers, our lives are busy, crazy. I get it. So make your life less stressful. Use a GeoGebra book to organize your favorite GeoGebra resources. I'm Tim Brzezinski. Thanks for watching. If you like, uh, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be creating a lot more how-to screencasts, tips and tricks to help make your life in GeoGebra a lot easier and a lot less stressful. It's it's the world's best math app. It's awesome. It can foster active, student-centered, discovery-based learning amazingly. Um, but uh, later this week, I'll show you how to uh, link up to Google Classroom. You can assign GeoGebra tasks and discovery lessons there, also within a GeoGebra group. So feel free to, to uh, subscribe to the channel if you like what you see. Uh, got a lot more coming. So um, thanks for watching. Have a great afternoon.